Harvard researchers have shown that consultants using ChatGPT were able to produce more outputs faster and at a significantly higher quality. Don't you also want to improve your efficiency, productivity, potentially improving your motivation, allowing you to, to spend more time on what matters to you? So to do so, you could use ChatGPT, but you should use it properly. And indeed, I realized that most people don't use ChatGPT or stop using it because of three myths that are unjustified. And I'm going to show you exactly how to overcome those myths or those potential unjustified problems. What are the solutions? So after more than a year working every day on ChatGPT, discussing with other researchers, doing research on ChatGPT and writing articles, I decided that it was time for me to share with you everything that I learned that might allow you to use ChatGPT efficiently, to use it where it's useful and avoid using it where it might be misleading. So here is the roadmap. First, of course, we are going to discuss quickly about what is ChatGPT. And then I'm going to address the three myths about ChatGPT and show why they are unjustified or how to overcome the potential issues. And those are, but ChatGPT is dumb and hence potentially useless, but ChatGPT makes mistakes and the output of ChatGPT is quite generic dull. We are going to see that most of the time there are unjustified accusations and that we can easily overcome those issues. So first of all, what is ChatGPT? Well, ChatGPT is an app that you can access online produced by a company called OpenAI. It's a chatbot. So in simple terms, through an interface, you can write or speak to a program. It will give you some answers. This type of model is called a large language model because it has been trained on virtually everything that's publicly available online and hence you have an artificial intelligence with who you can speak that has a very good knowledge of almost anything. But be careful, it's not necessarily the point of asking questions about technical stuff. And we are going to see this a bit later in this presentation. And ChatGPT, at least the version that everyone is playing with, are very recent. So for the public, it just started in November 2022 when OpenAI released ChatGPT 3.5. And just to give you the scale of the complexity of the model, ChatGPT 3.5 has 175 billion parameters in the model, while the GPT-4 version that was released just a few months afterwards in March 2023 has 1.7 trillion parameters. In this course, I'll focus on ChatGPT and ChatGPT+, Plus, but most of the concepts and comments I'm going to make are valid for all this family of models. Why do I focus on ChatGPT? So ChatGPT is, to the best of my knowledge, to what I experienced, discuss with other researchers, look in, in research, is still the best model today based on several benchmarks. So let's start with the first myth. ChatGPT is dumb. I love this example and this first myth that prevents many people from using it. So if you look at this uh, exchange with ChatGPT that I've seen on social media recently, is 450, 90% of 500? No, and here is, so that was the question by the user, and he, here is the answer by ChatGPT. No, 450 is not 90% of 500. To find 90% of 500, you can multiply 500 by 0.9, which gives you 450. Wait, actually, yes, 450 is 90% of 500. My apologies for the confusion. So many people will think, well, that's a clear example that uh, this tool is dumb. I don't need to go further. Well, first thing first. ChatGPT is not, it's a language model which is not specifically made to do simple computation like this. The fact that it's not able to do it, it just reveal that it was not made for that, doesn't mean that it's useless, right? You have tons of tools to do simple computation like this. You really don't need to write in natural language and talk with this AI to get this answer. So that's just a very bad example. The second, I really love it because it shows very interesting things. There is, during this very short answer of just two sentences, it's able to change its mind. It gathered the new information because during the, the answer, he observed on the left, so what, he said, what it has been said already, 
that actually it was 450 and it's able to correct itself. And being able to update your belief, update your answer and change your mind is usually quite a, a, a signal of intelligence. At least humans, in my opinion, will benefit a bit more of changing their minds from time to time. So actually, I think that this is a perfect example why it's not that jump and also why you should use it for the thing that it's efficient to do and not for other things, which will be the topic of later in this video and in my class. But let's also rely on research. So intelligence is tough to define. We could debate about this at length. But to make very short, humans love to standardize, give tests to people to assess their intelligence. And basically here, if you look at several, even a long list of tests that are usually tough for humans, that people have to be to work to prepare for this and that are usually good signals, at least what widely accepted that it's a signal of intelligence, at least some kind of academic intelligence. Well, ChatGPT is able usually to do very well on those tests. It's able to pass the bar exam and being in the top 10 percentile of, of the distribution compared to humans. It's able to, to do very well at the, the, essay, the SAT score as well in the top 7 percentile. And for other exams, for example, the GRE verbal or, and the GRE quantitative, which are typically exams that uh, I had to pass and my colleague had to pass to enter the a PhD program or doctoral school. Well, it's doing quite well, even on the quantitative part, which is not specifically what ChatGPT is made for. It was also even able to pass the United States medical licensing exam. So you have a long list of tests that ChatGPT is able to pass and you can look in the link to see more of the results from the research on this. So based at least on those standards, it's very hard to make the point that it's dumb. And linked to the first myth, many people are, are saying, well, as it's dumb, it's also useless. Well, as I said in the introduction, a research done by Harvard Business School, jointly with one of the top consulting firms in the world, Boston Consulting Group, they found in this research that those who were allowed to use ChatGPT compared to those who were not allowed were able to produce more output at a faster pace and, and with 40% higher quality, which is some quite solid evidence that even if highly skilled workers as consultants at BCG are able to improve significantly the, the way they work, I'm sure you can, and I'm sure it can be done at a large scale. More of several research, including this one, tend to show that lower skilled workers benefit even more from those tools. And last but not least, it's very important to note that in this research, for some tasks, people using ChatGPT did worse. And indeed, that's the point also, as I said, of this video and this class, is to understand when you should use or can use ChatGPT and when you should really avoid it. Because it's not made for everything. Based on the research that I read, that I did myself, articles I wrote, exchanged with experts on this topic, I'm quite convinced that most of the time, ChatGPT might be able to automatize some routine tasks that are a bit boring, help you to, to gain efficiency on those tasks, and allowing you to, to focus on what matters, on tasks that are meaningful to you. Hence, eventually improving, increasing your motivation as well as the quality of the output you create. But sure, there are still some dangers that can be debated and discussed and should be studied. One of those is that I really do not recommend copy-pasting directly the output from ChatGPT for any use or for vast or 99% of the time it's very destructive and not productive to do so. Already for the, the capacity to learn, if you just copy paste, it might prevent you from learning and improving on, on many things. Second, just copy pasting might spread some uniform content online, uniform way of speaking, of, of writing, because it's all generated by the same type of AI, which will be very sad and destructive to the richness and heterogeneity that we have in the world today. And if you're not convinced or your colleague are not convinced, well, note that tools to detect what has been generated by AI and text in particular are getting better and better. So for example, GPT-0 is more and more efficient. And note that it could be used retrospectively. So if you generate 
some text, some output for projects, for work, for things that are out there online, it might be possible that a few months from now we are able to detect very precisely what has been generated with those tools and then we can look back and see exactly who used it and copy pasted the results online or for some task. So be careful for all those reasons. Try to avoid at all cost copy pasting the output there. The second myth is that ChatGPT makes mistakes. Well, you know what? Humans make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But also humans have emotions and then potentially they also want to lie, to manipulate. They have their own agenda. So if anything, it is just as with any source of information, you should double check. You should challenge what you're reading, what you hear, what you see. And it's just a reminder of the importance of critical thinking. It is not because it's a computer that generates this output that it's the truth. It's the same with number. Numbers are, are tremendously useful, but we all know that they, they can be equally misleading. And actually, the tool is not necessarily made to tell you the th truth. And it's, it's not necessarily a problem, actually. So let's see why. This is actually the first solution to this issue, that ChatGPT might make mistakes, or sometimes we call it hallucination. So in many situations where ChatGPT can be useful, there is no ground truth. Imagine that you're brainstorming about the title of your next event, and you just ask for a list of potential titles, well, there are no truth. It's just suggestion. And if they are bad, you won't use it. If you use it for proofreading, for commenting on a report, well, you can just check the feedback and see if it's useful or not. You don't have right or wrong. You should be able to assess the answer. And honestly, in the vast majority of usage that I do with ChatGPT, it's like this. I will never ask for something where I don't know the answer. For example, I never ask which statistical test should I use in this context, okay? But that's not a big issue. It leaves hundreds, if not thousands, a very useful way to use ChatGPT, avoiding this issue. And in my full class, I will show actually also two more solutions how to actually get the source and check the veracity of what has been said. The third myth is that ChatGPT output is dull or generic. Well, Long story short, if your input or what we call the prompt is dull or generic, the, the likelihood that the output will be is very high. As with everything, if you don't put effort, you might get something that's not very valuable. And this is valid here as well. So together, you can learn more by joining my class and discovering my method to prompt engineering, where basically I will give you this list of tools and we are going to see each of them, how to apply them in different contexts, and when do you use those? What's the purpose? What are the issues it's trying to overcome? And I'm convinced that it will tremendously change the quality of the output you will get. And you will not get any more any dull or generic output because you have tools specifically made to address this issue. So if you want to learn more, click on the link below to follow the class. Don't hesitate to contact me on LinkedIn or ask me questions if you want to discuss more about the implementation and usage of ChatGPT for business. Thanks for joining and have a good day.